Good morning. I think we're doing it. Yeah, we good. I think so. How you doing this morning? Okay. It is May 6th. About 5.38 in the morning. I'm getting out a little bit late. This wasn't supposed to be a snowstorm here in Craig. This was supposed to be nothing, just rainy. That's what the local forecasters said. I think I made a comment that, yeah, on a video that I posted, not so, not so long ago, last week. that weather forecasters can't predict a day out. I think they said they can't predict a week out. Well, it's interesting. I don't quite understand what happened, but a couple days ago, I looked at the weather, the upcoming weather, and I knew there was a big storm coming in from Utah, from west, northwest, whatever west southwest northwest whatever if it's in utah it could be any of those directions anyway anyway um I looked at the weather forecast and they showed it this, snowy this day, um, maybe not quite as snowy as it is, I mean, I got, but I got the impression that there was some snow moving in, so okay, I can, I can work with that. So I prepared for snow, and then last night, I looked and all of a sudden, nope, no snow, just rain and all, hardly any rain, 20% chance of rain here. Like just hardly anything at all. Yeah, there was not anything going on here. So. <laughs> so I looked down south and it was like absolutely nothing going on down south. And I looked up north and it was the same thing, snow up north. So I'm assuming that this weather pattern moved north and either the computer messed up or a person messed up. So I've looked at this weather pattern and um, when I went to bed last night, I was thinking to myself, I bet you I'm going to get, we're going to get snow tonight. I mean, it just took me looking at the barometer, it kind of looked that way. The barometer, um, the temperature had warmed up. It always warms up before a storm. The warmer it is, the bigger the storm. And that's exactly what happened here. So, these guys are going out to the work, work area. There's a work area going on out here. You know, these guys that I'm following are heading that way. It was a CDOT truck. I can't imagine them at this point in time of day not going that direction. So anyway, they, they were quite wrong. 
<laughs> I believe would be the, the proper might be better. I don't know how that door got open, but it did. I pretty much never keep my really early morning videos, but I thought you'd enjoy that, enjoy seeing this. So my prediction, looking at this, is that the weather's probably going to be this way until Meeker. Now, uh, there was a, a winter storm advisory this morning when I got up, I looked outside. Well, I saw there was snow. I looked outside and saw there was snow. And so I, I, I thought I'd look at my little weather app on the phone. And weird, weird little phone I've, I mean, weird weather app I've got. It was a Norway weather station and it was showing a winter storm advisory from like 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. here with, an, with uh, snow falling over 8,000 feet. Um, I'm gonna get back off this guy. I don't know really if I'm passing. I see go even slower than this. Anyway, I'm just waking up. I've been up since 4.30. It's 5.46. So, Anyway, I figure it will be bad to Meeker anyway, because it does look like, I saw a camera, the camera about 15 miles south of where we're at right now, and it was covered in snow. That's all I needed to see. It was really snowy. Um, I looked at the camera in the rifle on the interstate and I could tell that there were clouds there but the, the roads were clear. Couldn't really see much, I mean it's dark.
But my feeling is that somewhere along the line, somebody looked at that forecast and said, oh, that can't be true. That's not global warming. And they changed something. And I mean, I got that feeling that that's what happened. But it could have just been that they thought that the, uh, that the storm was going to go a different direction. The most accurate weather that I get, and I don't know who actually forecasts it, but it does come from the Grand Junction, the regional office, which is, by the way, where we're going today. We're going to Grand Junction. So I did put my my uh, pubs in, so my running gear is operating, so if I need to shift it into four-wheel drive, I still have to slow down, but I can at least put it in four-wheel drive. I don't know that we need it. I wouldn't think we would need it here. I would think that on nine mile, maybe. Up a, heading up you know, nine mile, but I don't think here. It can really snow heavy here, though. I mean, it's a canyon, and it kind of. <clears throat> it closes off a little bit. I don't know if it squeezes clouds or concentrates precipitation, but there are times that it's really. That it's really. Uh, a, a whiteout here. I don't been watching this car really close. I had a squeak in it last week that bothered me. I didn't hear it this morning, I'm glad to say. I've been looking at my tire tread really carefully because I do my own alignments on this car. It looks like I've got it pretty good right now. But we'll see. This camera is really quite impressive. The, the vision that I'm getting, or the view that I'm getting, looking out the windshield, looks about like half an hour darker, half an hour earlier than what the camera looks like. It's, I, I can see that we're getting some light, a little bit of light now. I couldn't see that at all. And just a few minutes ago at Craig, but the camera looks like we're almost in daytime and it's not necessarily the case. No. Actually, it's like we're a little bit less, a little bit less snowy in the canyon today. Um, I like seeing that, <laughs> rather than not being able to see it all.
think the guys out ahead of me are coming up here. I really don't know what, what these guys do. For sure. The guys in the sea dock pickups. But I assume that they are heading out here to work because there is a lot of activity going on out here. Oh yeah, so the latest I heard was 5 to 10, I think. 5 to 10 inches up above 8,000 feet. So this appears to be a pretty strong storm. And I'll be going through it tomorrow also. It appears that it's going to linger up north and I have to go to Laramie tomorrow. So today is a taste. Tomorrow will be the, you know, the, the, the meal, I guess you could say. That's the opinion I have right now. But who knows? I mean, it might change. Apparently, the, something's going on with the forecasting where they're unsure what it's going to do. And again, that's typical weather forecasting. I took a digger on my bike on this corner one day, right where the guardrail stops, kind of right up in here. And I took a... Yeah, right in this area, actually, yeah, by up the driveway. I was going fast coming down the road and I, I ended up, I steered off the road. So, yeah, no. That repaired those pump. That repaired to to pump. There we go. Actually, they're supposed to do paving today <laughs> down here. I don't believe they're going to be doing any paving today. It looks to me like this storm is going to hang in here all day. Maybe they'll get their paving done tomorrow. Hell, they might get it done today, but usually when it's you know, I actually don't really know enough about paving, but I'm thinking when it's really, really rainy, paving, paved mud, I mean, you know, putting asphalt down is probably, probably doesn't stick very well if there's a big layer of water or ice, you know, that they are pushing it into. But who knows, maybe, maybe there's something different.
And I got some condensation I got to kill over there. I don't have to do that. The camera for Highway 13, the only camera between Craig and Meeker, which is about a 48 mile trip, <clears throat> is right here at the top of this hill. We're coming up on it shortly. Now there was, there is some more highway work going on up here, and I forgot, they had it, had some, oh they were patching a little spot right up in here last week, but then they, they had road construction signs up closer to Colorado, Isle, which is, which is where we're heading, so I'll be following this truck for a little bit longer than I thought. Okay with me. Here we are at the, about the top of the hill. Yeah, this is pretty much what I saw on the camera. Well, besides the saw snow. I'm still in two-wheel drive. This is still more slushy than anything else. It hasn't really turned into ice yet. But it is slip. Slippery. Slip? Slick. <laughs> I mean, it's a hydroplaning kind of a of a slick. right there. Nice, nice.
So my four-wheel drive still got a little vibration in it, but it's not nearly as bad as it was. I think it's probably the drive shaft at this point, but I'm still doing pretty good. I can I can do a reasonably good speed in four-wheel drive. It gets bad up over 65 is where it starts getting bad. The reason I think it'll be bad up on 20 miles is because, or 9 miles, is because it rises in elevation to about 7,900 feet. I mean, we were damn near at 8,000 feet. I think that's right. I believe it's about 8,000 feet. Might be lower. Might be 75. Might be 78. I need to. I forget. I forget all these elevations. They're not intuitive for some reason. They should be. But I, I remember them broadly, but not specifically. Like, for instance, the road up over the top of Grand Mesa is 11,000. I mean, it averages, once you get up on top at the high point, 11,800 feet. That's pretty cool. You know, 11,800 feet. Well, okay, it's pretty cool. But I can't remember that for some reason. I think, was it, was it 10,000 or 11,000? I mean, I get it off. I don't know why I'm that way, but I am. I think these guys will stop up here, but I could be wrong. The road construction stops up here, like the straight stretch right underneath Nine Mile. 
they look like they were trucking on the beaker. Find out. Had a bit of a slide right there. And give that truck a little bit more room in front of me. So maybe I would get less junk on my window, but really helping <laughs> maybe a little bit if we would actually get to where things were freezing it would get a lot cleaner right now we're still splashing the water everywhere that's one of the that's why I mean it would just be better all around if we got to where the weather was where the road was freezing because then we wouldn't have the slippery and the slushy it would be a much better drive but it is what it is, and I'm not in any hurry. We're doing about 58, 59, so I mean, really doing pretty well. But the slush is thick. It's kind of throwing me around a little bit. It reminds me of how snow is right before it finally starts packing, you know. There's a point at which it's still, it's still slush, but then, like, at some magical moment, it turns into, you know, ice. Not slush, but ice. We may not actually get that. We may just be right on that edge, but it's really slippery when it does this and that's what it's doing now it's slowing me down and slowing the guy in front of me down too i'm i'm a little bit more wiggly than he is though he's a longer wheelbase rig with a lot more weight than i am so this kind of condition 
likes to whip this little car around more than a big truck. But the car is still pretty stable. But the wheelbase is tiny on this. I mean, it's not much different than a Samurai. So it, you get, yeah, you get these little, you may not, obviously you can't feel it, but you might be able to see it, you know, to see when I'm doing my little side to side. I had to kick my four wheel drive in to get out of that spin or that slide. I'll try to keep one of my tires in his tire track. That might help a little bit. Well, we got about an inch and a half of slush on the road, so it's not, no wonder it's, it's becoming, you know, throwing everybody, well, throwing me around anyway. Yeah, this is the worst conditions I've ever had this car in. As far as stay, being on the road, staying stable. It's fucking slush. And the thing is, is my wheelbase is a little bit narrower, you know, than, than that, any of the other vehicles. So I can only get in one track. My other track is up in the high slot, you know, in the high stuff. So, well, I got one side reasonably grabby. The other side wants to, you know, is angry, is fighting me.
Funny story, they were around too. These slowed way down. <laughs> What's happening to him? Yeah, see that's the shit that's on the road. It's ridiculous stuff. It's trying to pack up. Those a little better deer. Good, we're just fucking packed. We would be a lot better off. I would be a lot better off. Well, the steering would be better. getting bad. You know, a snowplow would be kind of handy for this kind of shit. This is extremely difficult for this for the, all these vehicles. It's nasty. towards the top. As good as we are, okay. May. May in Colorado, you know, can be pretty rough.
balancing a ball on a ball. That's what yeah, driving this car is like in this stuff. Like balancing a ball on top of a ball. Having that short build base. I'm appreciating following this guy now. I mean, his he's able to blow through enough. I'm getting a good enough feel for his You know, the funny thing is, if the plow would come along here and plow this road, in probably 20 minutes or half an hour, it would just be wet. So it's amazing how important those plows are. They're annoying as hell to get behind, though. I really, really hate getting behind them. They do that to you too. Yeah, he's, he's having his hard times too. I'm looking at his tracks a little bit closer. He's getting thrown around just a little bit. Nothing like I'm getting thrown around, but for him in his truck, or her in her truck, whatever, he's probably quite unnerved by that because that's a much more stable platform, you know, in this kind of shit. There's a place, there's a time and a place for these really short wheelbase four-wheel drives. I mean, they they can be awesome, but they can also they can also be you know detrimental. I mean, right now, yeah, they're not. This is not the car for this condition. This is the worst. Yeah, this is probably the worst driving I have ever done with this car. The having having it with the least amount of control, and I still have a lot of control. But it's just squirrely. I think squirrely would be a good, you know, a good description. Yeah. I don't like that rooster tail that they throw up. With this car, I have passed, you know, it's, well, I pass. I, I, I pass everybody in weather like this. I'm keeping up with this guy, but only because he's breaking trail for me. So this is, I have found the condition that this car is at its weakest. And it is this really thick slush. Looks like they've... No, no. Like, look at that. Look what they've plowed. It's already wet, and it's not even bad there. It's like, it's weird how how quickly, even when there's not much sun, which right now there's no, you know, very little sun. We're, we, it's lighting, it's lighting us up from, you know, a pretty steep angle. It's not overhead by any means. But the weather is what it is. That's why this is so shitty. The weather is like right at 32 degrees. 
And people will tell you correctly, that is the absolute worst time to be on the road. And it is, because you get this kind of shit. You know, you'll get ice-ish and you'll get slippery, you know, slippery stuff. So it's bad. Getting bad, but we're making it. The snow is really getting lighter over here too, so that's nice to see. I'm hoping it'll be better going to rifle. I don't want to do this all the way to rifle. But this high country, it might be made just have more of this shit all the way to rifle.
Well, that was a white knuckle drive. Here we are in Meeker. We made it, I'm glad to say. I certainly don't want the interstate to be as crappy as this 